I'm getting the feeling of deja vu, YouTube. I feel like I've seen this movie before. Let's talk about game four of the NBA Finals. DreAllDay.com What's going on, everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. It is 12.01 a.m. Game four of the NBA Finals just ended. Golden State Warriors 108 points. Cleveland Cavaliers 97 points. The Warriors are now up three games to one, going home for game five, where they can close it out to win their second straight title and cap off the best win-loss-wise, best season in the history of the NBA if they can win game five. Now, the reason I said what I said in the intro, I feel like I've seen this movie before, is I felt like I've seen this LeBron James before. LeBron James, statistically, if you didn't watch the game, you just looked at the stats, aside from the seven turnovers, he had a great game. 25 points, over 50% from the floor. He only was one for three, five on threes. Half of his free throws, not a big deal. 13 rebounds, nine assists, two steals, three blocks. Stats-wise, it was a fantastic game. If you didn't watch the game, you would think LeBron played excellently. But I watched the game. Most of y'all watched the game. And I tweeted this at the end of the game. LeBron James is the only basketball player alive who can get a triple-double or pretty close to a triple-double in the NBA Finals and still be underwhelming. It was like, yeah, great stats, but it's like, it kind of felt like he didn't do anything at the same time that he had a triple-double. He's the only player in the world who's that good. No other player in the world can do that. So overall, about this game in general, I'm just disappointed just because I didn't see the best players play their best basketball. We have yet to see one game in this finals where all of the best players play good basketball at the same time. Not even their best, not even a superstar game, but just play good. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson had finally both played good at the same time. Kyrie Irving actually played really well scoring-wise. We're going to talk a little bit about Kyrie Irving in a moment. LeBron James stats-wise looked good, but it just it didn't feel like he did anything. At the same time, he had 25, 13, and 9. Y'all tell me if y'all felt the same thing that I felt. Looking over, let's look, let's look at the winning team side, then we'll come back to the losing team. The Golden State Warriors. Harrison Barnes has actually played very well in these finals. He's stayed out the way we need to stay out the way. He's four for five on threes in game in game four. He was four for five on threes. Those threes were the difference in this game. Eight rebounds, two assists, five of 11 from the floor, scored 14 points. Harrison Barnes in the OKC series wasn't doing much. He was pretty quiet for a lot of the OKC series. And it looked like he was gonna be kind of overmatched in this series, but he's actually holding his ground pretty well. And he's done a good job guarding Kevin Love when Kevin Love has, I don't know, I guess Kevin Love calls it overpowering him in the post or trying to overpower him in the post. He hasn't been able to do it. Harrison Barnes has actually been playing his role very well. So respect to Harrison Barnes' performance in this series because I didn't think he was going to perform too well in this series. They actually have sent, I mean, Andre Iguodala is still coming off the bench and playing a lot of minutes, but is usually in place of Bogut. It's Bogut whose minutes are being cut, not Harrison Barnes. So Harrison Barnes has actually stepped up pretty well so the Warriors are pretty much a six-man team in this in this uh in this game so we got Barbosa didn't even get in the game so you got 40 minutes plus for Harrison Barnes Draymond Green and you got 39 39 for Clay and Steph and you got 37 for Iguodala so that's basically their five Bogut played 10 minutes didn't do nothing he had one rebound one assist he didn't he pretty much got they pretty much got him out the game and they just made it into a small game Andre Iguodala is a great great glue guy he's a great role player so he's found his perfect role here with Golden State he plays great defense on LeBron James he has great hands he makes those little he makes those strips he got long ass arms and he makes timely plays offensively when the Warriors need it they don't need him to dominate they don't need him they don't need to run no plays for him just make some timely timely plays when necessary he's that veteran presence he's played a great role I mean he won MVP the finals last year I think we pretty much know that Clay and Steph Curry finally both had a good game at the same time. 11 three-pointers between the two of them. Steph Curry caught fire, scored 38 points, six assists, five rebounds. A Steph Curry game, kind of game he's been having all season to get that MVP award. Draymond was only two of nine from the floor. His, he's lost his three-point touch for some reason, but he still grabbed 12 boards, four assists, three blocks, two steals, three turnovers. Good game, pretty good game. That's a pretty good Draymond Green game. I mean, we're not expecting him to score a bunch of points. If he gets double figures, fine, but what he does is grab all those damn rebounds. And he's a great passer. You only have four assists, but that's a, a contribution for a guy that's pretty much playing power forward or center for your team. He makes a hell of a contribution. And he's 
he's the emotional leader of that team and he's going up against LeBron James a lot of the time and holding his own. I would have to say he's holding his own, especially mentally with LeBron James. With the exception of game three, Draymond Green is pretty much holding his own mentally against LeBron James. And I guess since the Warriors are up 3-1, you could say he's winning right now. Let's look at the Cleveland Cavaliers side. Then we get into some subjective stuff from this game. Richard Jefferson, everybody was saying, well, Kevin Love getting out of the lineup. Richard Jefferson coming in is the difference maker. I told y'all that's not the answer. Richard Jefferson is not the long-term answer for the Cleveland Cavaliers. In this series, the rest of this series, game four, five, six, seven, if necessary, Richard Jefferson is not going to be your long-term solution. 24 minutes, he took two shots, scored three points. He grabbed six rebounds. Other than that, he did absolutely nothing. He had two turnovers and he fouled out. He had six fouls. Richard Jefferson is not going to be the starting forward on a team that's going to win against this Golden State Warriors club. It's really just not going to happen. The Richard Jefferson can start. Actually, let me recap that. Let me change that. He can start, but he can't finish. He can't play. You're not going to get 30-plus minutes out of Richard Jefferson. I don't even think you get 25 minutes out of Richard Jefferson and beat this Golden State Warriors team three times in a row because the Cavs got to win three games in a row now. That's not going to happen. Now, can you put Kevin Love in the lineup and beat this Warriors team three times in a row? Um... I'm not sure I see that happening either. <laughs> somebody somebody on his lineup, somebody on his team got to get in the game. Unless they're going to play four on five, LeBron will come back too. Tristan Thompson got you 10 points, seven rebounds. That's pretty much all he did. Uh, he five for seven from the floor. He was kind of, I don't know, Tristan Thompson, I don't remember any single play Tristan Thompson made all game. J.R. Smith, three of 10 from the floor, 10 points. J.R. Smith game. I mean, what are you, I told y'all before this series you do not bet anything never bet anything on J.R. Smith positive or negative because you never know what's actually going to happen Kyrie Irving we'll come back to Kyrie actually let's go with Kyrie 43 minutes 34 points good shooting 50% from the floor made four or five three-pointers made a couple threes I mean free throws made a couple threes four assists four rebounds three steals he had a good game stats wise again Kyrie Irving again he did have a good game stats wise similar to LeBron James but I still didn't feel like Kyrie Irving, I mean, he gave up 38 points on defense. Let's just put it right there. We can just put it right there. That's all you need to say. He scored 34, he gave up 38. So basically his 34 is erased and his team lost. I mean, that's the bottom line of it. His stats look great. He had a couple nice moves, shaking bakes, you know, Kyrie doing Kyrie things, but he also did Kyrie things on the other end of the floor, giving up 38 points to Stephen Curry. If you score 34 and give up 38, your 34 don't count, especially if you lost. LeBron James, Kevin Love, let's go to Kevin Love. Came off the bench, he's back, so people can stop calling him soft. People, I heard, I was talking to this guy today, he called Kevin Love soft. <laughs> people just called Kevin Love soft. So he played 25 minutes, three or six from the floor, 11 points, five rebounds. I mean, the, was Kevin Love even there? Can anybody name one thing Kevin Love did this game? Can anybody name one play that Kevin Love made in game four? I can't name one play that anybody on the Cavs made in all of game four. And it was a competitive game all the way up into the fourth quarter. So, the fourth quarter began as a competitive game, but I don't remember any one play that anybody on the Cavs made. Anybody. LeBron James, I mean, I said this after game two. LeBron James is the obviously the best player on the Cavs. He's the leader of the Cleveland Cavaliers. When he comes and brings the energy, everybody else is going to follow suit. If he does not bring energy, nobody else is going to bring energy. Nobody else on that team can bring energy besides LeBron James. If he's not bringing it, nobody else is bringing it. And I think I pretty much said this after the game three wrap up that after game three, the cap, the Warriors would kind of come down and relax, take a deep breath. They withstood the, they took the, the onslaught, the wave, the tsunami from the Cavaliers with their home crowd and the pride on the line. They came out and kicked the Warriors ass in game three. The Warriors are going to come back and regress to the mean, which means play better. And the Cleveland Cavaliers, I mean, we saw them in the first two games of the series and we saw them in game three. Which one do we believe? I think we got to believe a mix of all three games. Yes, they showed up big in game three because all their pride was on the line. Everybody was shitting on them. And in game four, they were going to regress to the mean, meaning coming from up here, how they played in game three, a little bit back down to earth. Warriors coming this way, Cavs going this way. And what happened? We get them just as they are, and the Warriors pretty much beat them. 108-97. They didn't blow them out, but they beat them pretty soundly. This game didn't seem, it didn't seem very close through much of the fourth quarter. It was never a point in the fourth quarter. It looked like the Cavs were going to really take the lead or put the game away it never seemed like that it always seemed like the Warriors were one or two plays away from doing it and then they actually did it what else can I say about this game Douglas Vadova didn't play much Channing Fry did nothing and Mon Shumpert 
got in the game, he did absolutely nothing. Amon Shumpert, offensively, I thought he was better than he actually is. Or maybe better than he's been in these finals. I thought he had some offensive, I thought he had something to bring to the table offensively. He actually does not. His shot has completely left him. He gets way too, he seems just way too excited offensively. <laughs> when he's trying to, trying to make plays and not making those plays, he needs to hopefully stop trying to make plays. But he don't get the ball enough that we can, nobody can put any blame on Amon Shumpert. I got to put it back on the guys on top. LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. First of all, Kyrie Irving, he is a great offensive player. We know Kyrie Irving is gifted offensively. He can score 30 on pretty much anybody. He's dropped 32 games in a row. But you can't give up 38 points on defense to the MVP of the league and expect your team to win. It's just not going to happen. Steph Curry did not play good in game three. And the Cavaliers jumped on that, pounced on it. And Klay Thompson not playing good. And all the energy they got from LeBron James, the leader, LeBron James. In addition to the points from Kyrie Irving, they did their thing. Kyrie Irving comes out and has another great game offensively, but look, they lose this game after winning the previous game by 30. So what's the difference? Obviously, it's not Kyrie Irving because if Kyrie Irving was the difference, that meant they would have won this game, let's say, by 10. They would have been on the winning end of the score instead of losing end of it. So obviously, the difference is not Kyrie Irving's points. Kyrie Irving's points is not the difference in the Cavs winning or losing because he's 30 in both games. They won one by 30 and they lost the other one pretty soundly, which was tonight. He's not the difference. The difference is what LeBron James does. And it's not necessarily LeBron James' stats. See, some of us look at stats and they're like, well, LeBron James had this, this, this stat. Yes, the stats look great. And yes, you cannot argue with stats. They are black and white. But it's the energy that he brings to the floor. You can watch the game and just tell what kind of energy is LeBron James bringing. And it's very simple to see. When LeBron James has the ball at the top of the key, there's one guy on him, and he's not even trying to make anything happen. Even if you try and mess up, that's better than you trying to force a pass to... Let's see who was on the Cavaliers team. Who, who should LeBron James be passing the ball to? When he has a one-on-one -on -one isolation, who is it okay for LeBron James to pass the ball to? Richard Jefferson? Eh, wrong answer. Tristan Thompson? Eh, wrong answer. J.R. Smith, unless he's wide open for a three? Eh, wrong answer. Kevin Love? Maybe. Maybe you can give Kevin Love a few touches, but I think we all can see Kevin Love is pretty ineffective in this series. He's not making anything happen. Amon Shumpert, Matthew Dova Dova, Channing Fry, unless he's open for a three. Uh, what's Dante Jones, he's not getting in the game. The only person LeBron James should be passing the ball to, when he has an opportunity to attack but he doesn't, the only person he should pass the ball to is Kyrie Irving or somebody who's wide open for a layup or a three. If it's not a layup or a three, he should not be passing the ball to a guarded player on his team so that that guy could try to go one-on-one. -on -one. What sense does that make? Makes no sense whatsoever. So LeBron James, a lot of times in game four, he was just passing the ball to somebody for no reason. I'm like, dude, shoot the ball, attack, drive, do something. Shoot a bad jump shot. Do something other than just give the ball to one of your teammates who is not half as good as you. It's not going to make anything happen. Unless you're giving the ball to Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie might score some points, but every time Kyrie misses, all that's going to happen is the Warriors are going to come back and score because Kyrie can't play no defense. He can't stop Stephen Curry. Curry's missing. Curry was missing the previous game. He wasn't being stopped by Kyrie Irving. He was missing. There's a difference between getting stopped and missing. And Kyrie, I mean, Steph Curry started making this game, and y'all saw the difference. J.R. Smith, we already know his story. LeBron James just has to bring some. He got to bring the energy mentally. He got to lead this team energy-wise. He has to lead the team energy-wise. Not Richard Jefferson, not Dante Jones. It ain't going to be Kyrie Irving. Definitely not J.R. Smith. It's not going to be Kevin Love. It got to be LeBron James. If they're going to win a game, another game in the NBA Finals this year, at least bring the series back to Cleveland where they could possibly win what would be game six and possibly send it to a game seven. But now they got to go on the road and win game five. With all the momentum against them, that's going to be a tough one. Let's talk about the Warriors real quick. Then we're going to talk about what needs to happen the rest of this series. Well, what's left of this series is either going to be five, six, or seven games. So let's see. Golden State Warriors played a very good game tonight. I mean, it's nothing. They played a great game. I mean, they had the Cavaliers were pretty much with them in the first half. It was a good game in the first half. Even through three quarters, it was a good game. And it, despite how much good plays how many good plays the Cavaliers made it never felt like the Cavaliers were in control of the game because you know with this Warriors team throughout this season all it takes one minute of momentum to swing their way they get a couple stops make a couple threes and they got so many guys who can knock down that wide open three it seems like Curry and Clay is like four people even though it's only two of them it's only one minute away from them making the game all over again and you need a timeout the Cavaliers the Cavaliers real real error tonight two errors number one there was no ball movement on offense. It was a whole lot of one-on-one. -on -one. It was a whole lot of somebody get the ball. Everybody stand around and wait to see what this one guy does with the ball. That works when you're, let's say, the Oklahoma City Thunder and you got two guys who can do it. 
and they're passing the ball. They're creating offense off the bounce, getting into the paint, passing the other guys who know what their roles are. Maybe it works at, for some parts of the game, but the Cleveland Cavaliers, no, it doesn't work because LeBron James is not really a one-on-one -on -one offensive player. He's not really that type of guy. He's a straight line guy. You get him moving with some momentum offensively, that's when he gets his points. He gets his points by default just because he's so damn good. He's not even really a scorer. Kyrie Irving can go one-on-one. -on -one. He is a one-on-one -on -one guy. The thing that the liability you have with Kyrie Irving is that he, if he's playing against a good point guard, that point guard is going to match him point for point. That's pretty much what's going to happen because Kyrie Irving is not stopping nobody. So the Cavs had no movement on offense. So when the Warriors stopped missing and started making shots, that's when the difference in the game happened because the Cavaliers were running the, a stagnant offense most of the game. They were just they just had the Warriors missing. But as soon as the Warriors started making, all of a sudden the Cavaliers offense couldn't keep up with the Golden State offense. It's just not going to happen. So where the ball movement went, I don't know. If Ty Luce started calling different plays, if the players just didn't run the plays, I have no idea what goes on in their huddle, but there was no ball movement whatsoever in this game. And the second thing, the real, real, real reason they lost this game, lack of defensive intensity. Offensive rebounds, Anderson Barajal came in and created how many offensive rebounds? I don't know if they even credited him with the offensive rebound, all the offensive rebounds he actually created. He got credit for three offensive boards. I think that's pretty accurate. He created a bunch of offensive rebounds, like tipping the ball out. You know, the guy who tips the ball gets the credit for the offensive board, even though he didn't actually grab the ball. He created those offensive boards. There was one possession for Golden State where they got like three offensive rebounds and they still ended up missing their last shot. But that's one of those back baked back breaking possessions because it milks the clock first of all it forces you to put out all this energy on defense Cavs, and then they went down and missed and then the warriors came right back and scored a shot i think iguodala made a shot right after that series so the Cavs, the warriors got like four shots in one possession four or five shots to the Cavs one in that sequence that one or two minute sequence that that happened it was just a lack of defensive intensity no rebounding defensive rebounding was just non-existent for the cavaliers lebron could have had i think he had 13 boards he could have had 20 rebounds he didn't seem that that engaged defensively he just didn't seem engaged and again we are LeBron James is judged on a curve he's judged on a scale that no other player in the league is judged on just because of his abilities his physical abilities if he had been engaged on defense he could have got five more rebounds if he would have been engaged he wasn't engaged it was many points where he was just watching the ball a lot of times the Warriors shoot the ball. Every time the Warriors shoot the ball, I don't even look at the ball. I don't even look at the shooter. I look at the area around the basket and I look at the team on defense. Are they finding a man and boxing out? Many times when the Warriors shoot an outside jump shot, you know what the Cavaliers players do? They all stand and look at the ball. And LeBron James is one of those guys. He just stands and looks at the ball. The thing with LeBron, he's so big and athletic, he can get the rebound anyway without boxing out. But the few times he doesn't, those four, five, six, seven possessions a game when he does it, those are back breakers when you are playing against a good team. The Golden State Warriors are a damn good team. Those back breaking offensive rebounds, they lost the game by 11 points. The Warriors won by 11 points. Anderson Jabarajal had three offensive rebounds. So let's say they hit two threes, make one two pointer, that's eight points, and then they get a couple free throws off of missed. Missed opportunities for the Cavs to grab rebounds. Look at all the offensive rebounds. Golden State Warriors grabbed 14 offensive rebounds in this game. Cleveland Cavaliers grabbed 16 offensive rebounds. Six of them were by, were by Tristan Thompson. Defensively, they grabbed 24 rebounds. And I think it was pretty even defensively. The Warriors grabbed 29 defensive rebounds. It was the timing of those rebounds and the shots that were gotten off of the offensive rebounds that made all the difference. Because the Cavs didn't get a lot of second chance points. The Warriors got a lot of second chance points off free throws and off three pointers. The Cavs weren't, weren't hitting three pointers off those offensive boards, but the Warriors were. So it was just a lack of defensive intensity, a lack of defensive focus. And against a team like Golden State who shoots those threes, those splash brothers, you can't have, a la you can't have lapses on defense. You're going to lose the game because it only takes two or three lapses on defense is 10 points for the Golden State Warriors. And how, where are you going to get those 10 points back from? You can't just generate 10 points out of nowhere against a team like the Warriors who are a good defensive team. So they go so good on offense, people don't even talk about their defense. So the Cavs just didn't show up defensively, not locked in on the defensive board, didn't box out well enough, and their leader, their best player, LeBron James, he just wasn't locked in mentally. It was like, it reminded me of 2010 against Boston when he was playing for the Cavs. He had good stats, but it was like he kind of wasn't doing nothing. Like, you got, the numbers look good, but it's like he ain't doing anything. It was like 2011 when he was playing for the Heat. 
And they went to the finals against Dallas. The stats were okay, but it was like he wasn't doing anything. Like, dude, are you going to attack? Are you going to try to make a play? Are you going to do anything? It's kind of like you you just out there. And he's so good, he can put up good stats without being locked in. But you can tell subjectively just watching the game. Like, dude, are you, going, are you playing or what? What are you doing? That's the impression that I got from this game. Now we got game five. Game five is in Oracle Arena. Warriors got a chance to win their second back-to-back -back title. I know they want to close it out at home. I know they don't want to go back to Cleveland. <sighs> My pick for this series was Cavs in six. So obviously the Cavs can't win in six. The only way they can win this series is by forcing it to game seven by winning the next two games. So being that the Cavs can't win in six, I'm going to have to follow my, I'm going to have to follow my intelligence here. I'm going to have to follow my basketball intelligence for my pick in game five. I think the Golden State Warriors are going to close them out. I think the Warriors will close out the Cavs in game five. Just because of everything that I just said for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> and everything y'all have seen for the last four games. I got to, my head says the Warriors are going to close out this series. My heart says I want to see more basketball. My heart says I want to see a Game 7 of the NBA Finals. When was the last time we had that? Heat against the Spurs? My heart says I want to see a Game 7 of the NBA Finals. But I have no idea. I don't, I don't have a strategy for how the Cleveland Cavaliers, besides them bringing the energy mentally, there's no X and O strategy that's going to win two more games against the Golden State Warriors for the Cavs. It's not an X's and O's thing. It's not an X's and O's. If it comes down to X's and O's, the Warriors just got better pieces. The Cavs got the king piece, and the king, pardon the expression, and LeBron James. But if he don't bring the energy, there's no way they can win. They can't win without him bringing that energy. X's and those wise, they can't do it. It's impossible. Not impossible, but it's highly improbable. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So my pick for game five, I think the Warriors are going to close them out. Just as a basketball observer, the Warriors are going to close them out. My pick was Cavs in six. Obviously, that can't happen no more. So now I'm just picking rationally what I think is going to happen. Now, if the Cavs can win game five, then I'm definitely picking them for game six to send it to a game seven. And game seven, all bets are off. I'm making no prediction. I just want to see the game. I want to see a game seven, but my head says we ain't getting to a game seven. My head says I'm not sure LeBron James want to play anymore. I'm not sure the Cavs have any more will to compete. I think Kyrie Irving could go get another 30 points. It won't matter because they're still going to lose. Even if he gets 30, even if he gets zero, Kyrie Irving's output does not determine whether the Cavs win or lose. I think how long Kyrie Irving been in the league, I think we got a pretty good idea of that, right? Yes? Okay, good. Now LeBron James, if he shows up mentally, really, really, really shows up, especially on the road, they need it way more because they don't have a home crowd. If he really, really shows up, I'm, I'm talking 2012 boss against Boston in game six shows up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it, YouTube it. 2012 Miami at Boston game six. Unless he shows up like that, this series is over. He has to show up like that. He can't even show up how he did in game three. No, he got to show up like game six in Boston 2012. Short of that, this series is done. I want to hear what y'all think. Let me know in the comments. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com. What could you not do with more confidence? Less attention to the negativity of other people. More focus on your goals than nothing else and not letting unfortunate circumstances slow you down. Would all of those help you out? Well, go to dreallday.com slash bulletproof. Check out my new eight-week course called Bulletproof Mindset. Get started, and I'll see you over there. Work on you. If you're on Snapchat, hit me on the snap. My snap name is at Dre Baldwin. You already know how that works. And I got a podcast, if you didn't know. It is called Work On Your Game. It is an everyday podcast where I talk about getting yourself into the right mindset, that bulletproof mindset. Getting yourself seen, heard, known, getting the exposure you want and making things happen in your life instead of waiting for things to happen to or for you. Subscribe to that podcast. We on iTunes, SoundCloud and Stitcher. Make sure you check it every single day. Make sure you're subscribed so you catch the heat. Work on your game.